In this lecture, we will study about locking protocol introduction. So let T0, T1 up to Tn be a set of transactions participating in a schedule S. So let's suppose this is schedule S and here we have transaction T0, T1. Up to we have Tn. So these are the number of transactions which participate in a schedule. We say that transaction Ti precedes Tj in S, and it can be written as Ti direction Tj. If there exists a data item Q such that Ti has held lock mode A on Q, and Tj has held lock mode b and q later and the compatibility of a and b is equal to false so what is the meaning of this so ti precedes tj which can be written as so so there exists a data item there exists a data item q okay such that Ti held, held a lock mode A. So here uh, we can have lock mode A on data item Q. Okay. And Tj has held lock mode B on Q later. So after this, Tj has held lock mode B on Q. And the compatibility of A and b is equal to false then we can say that transaction ti precedes tj okay so here uh, what will the what will the value of a so a and b can be okay so here a and b can be either shared log or exclusive log okay so it can be shared exclusive okay and the Compatibility of A comma B. Uh, the compatibility of A comma B uh, is equal to false here. Okay. Similarly, it can be exclusive for A and shared for B. Then compatibility of A and B will be false, or both can be exclusive. Okay. So these are the possible combination where the compatibility of A and B is equal to false. Okay. If Ti precedes Tj, then that precedence implies that in any equivalent serial schedule, Ti must appear before Tj. So, what is the meaning of this? So, let's suppose, let's suppose uh, we have a schedule S and we have two transactions here, Ti and Tj. In this case, Ti precedes Tj okay by this definition. So there is a serial schedule. Let's suppose SDS is a corresponding serial schedule for S. Then in this case as well, in the serial schedule as well, TA precedes Tj. Okay, so that is the meaning of this second point. So this schedule serial schedule SDS is equivalent to this particular schedule S. Okay. We say that a schedule S is legal under a given locking protocol if S is a possible schedule for a set of transactions that follow the rules of the locking protocol. Okay. So let's suppose S is any schedule under any uh, given locking, locking protocol. So this locking protocol we will study in the next uh, lecture. So what is locking protocol? So we say that a schedule S is legal under a given locking protocol if S is a possible schedule for a set of transactions that follow the rules of the locking protocol. So S should be uh, S should be called as a legal uh, schedule if it uh, follow the rules of uh, any locking protocol. Okay. So now come to the next. We say that a locking protocol ensures conflict serializability 
if and only if all legal schedules are conflict realizable in other words for all legal schedules the associated uh, direction relation is acyclic so what is the meaning of this okay so it means let's suppose so there is a relation that is called acyclic okay so acyclic means let's suppose uh ti is a transaction precedes tj okay then tj okay so let me take in the general form let's suppose t0 is a transaction which precedes t1 and t1 is a transaction which precedes t2 and so on tn minus is a transaction which precedes t then we can have t0 is a transaction which will precedes tn okay so this is a an acyclic relation and uh, another point you have to remember in the in the acyclic relation is that when t0 precedes t1 then t1 cannot precedes t0 so this thing you have to keep in mind okay so we say that a locking protocol ensures conflict serializability if and only if all legal schedules are conflict serializable that is it is conflict equivalent to a serial schedule in other words for all legal schedules the associated direction relation is acyclic and that is i told you the what is a acyclic relation here so once again if t0 precedes t1 which precedes t2 and so on up to tn minus 1 which precedes tn then t0 will precedes tn and this one another condition if t0 precedes t1 then t1 cannot precedes t0 in the general form you can say if ti precedes tj then tj cannot precedes ta okay now what is starvation suppose that a transaction t2 has a shared mode lock on a data item and another transaction t1 request an exclusive mode lock on the data item so let's suppose uh, q is a data item okay so q is a data item now this data item is uh, held by the transaction t2 okay and the and the and the lock mode is shared mode lock okay so you can have lock s q so this particular data item q is held by a shared mode lock by the transition t2 okay so meanwhile another transition t1 another transition t1 okay request an exclusive mode lock okay so exclusive mode lock on q okay, so then what will happen clearly t1 has to wait for t2 to release the shared mode lock okay so t1 has to wait here why it is because the sorry uh, it is because the compatibility the compatibility of this uh, s and this x is equal to false okay so t1 has to wait here meanwhile a transaction t3 may request a shared mode lock on the same data item the lock request is compatible with the lock granted to t2 so t3 may be granted the shared mode lock okay so let's suppose meanwhile another transaction that is t3 okay which request t3 which request is shared mode lock okay shared mode lock on data item q okay so since this s and this s are compatible so this lock can be granted to the transaction t3 okay so this is granted uh, why it is because the this 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 shared s and this shared s so the compa uh, compatibility compatibility of shared and shared is equal to true so we can write it like this compatibility of shared and shared is equal to true hence this uh, lock on data item q by the transaction t3 will be granted at this point t may release the lock okay so let's suppose at this point t may release the lock 
sorry t2 may release the lock so it is release the lock okay then what will happen at this point t2 may release the lock but still t1 has to wait for t3 to finish just to, here still t1 has to wait because t3 uh, has not completed its uh, uh, execution on the uh, on the data item q and this compatibility of this x and s is false okay in fact it is possible that there is a sequence of transactions that each request a shared mode log on the data item and each transaction releases the lock a short while after it is granted but t1 never gets the exclusive mod lock on the data item okay so what is the meaning of this okay so let's suppose now currently this this is a situation here now here t1 is waiting for t3 to finish let's suppose meanwhile another transaction t4 which request a shared mode lock on the on the uh, data item q since uh, t3 has hold a shared mode lock on data item q and t4 is re requesting a shared mode lock both are compatible so it can be granted okay now let's suppose after this is granted let's suppose t3 releases the lock still t1 has to wait because now t4 has held the lock on the shared mode okay now let's suppose another transaction t5 which uh, requests the shared mode lock on data item q and it will be granted because t4 has hold the shared mode lock it will be granted now after this let's suppose t4 releases the lock but still t1 has to wait because now t5 has hold the lock so in this way it can continue the transaction t1 may never make progress and it is said to be stopped okay so in this way next uh, t6 will come then it will release then next t7 will come then it will release still t1 has to wait for a longer time or for the indefinite time okay so this kind of situation is called as starvation so here the transaction t1 will stopped So we can avoid starvation of transactions by granting logs in the following manner. So there are some uh, rules. If we apply those rules, then we can easily avoid starvation. When a transaction TI, okay. So when a transaction TI request a lock on data item Q, <coughs> so it is requesting a lock on data item Q. In a particular mode M, okay. So this is lock mode is M. It may be shared mode or it may be a exclusive mode. The concurrency control manager grants the lock provided that so the two two conditions are there. There is no other transaction holding a lock on Q in a mode that conflicts with M. Okay. So the transaction the concurrency control manager will grant the lock for this transaction T I if there is no other transaction. Holding a lock on Q in a mode that conflicts with the M. So let's suppose um, M is let's suppose shared mode. Okay, let's suppose M is shared mode. Then no other transaction is holding this particular uh, data item Q in a mode that is that is conflict with this this mode M. Okay, so it may be lock. Let's suppose X exclusive mode okay so so this particular uh, this particular uh, request is not granted because here this mode m that is said and this mode a, this is exclusive which is uh, conflicts okay this is the first point now what is the second point the second point says that there is no other transaction that is waiting for a lock on Q and that made its lock request before TI. There is no other transaction that is waiting for lock on Q and that made its lock request before TI. Okay, so uh, it can be described as follows. So let's suppose Q is a data item. Now it is currently hold 
a shared mode lock by the transition uh, by the transition tz okay now let's suppose after this another transition let's suppose tk request for the exclusive mode block on the item q it has to wait because this x and this s are not compatible okay now meanwhile so now it is first point now it is holding the lock tj is holding the lock on shared mode tk is requesting for the exclusive mode lock on data item q it has to wait second point let's suppose after this request third ti comes okay and it request okay and the request is shared mode lock on data item q so there is no other transaction is waiting for the lock on q and that made its lock request before ti so see here here the um, the compatibility function of this shared and shared are true okay so this is shared mode this is, this is also shared mode so this may be allowed but here t1 has ti has to wait or it is not granted why it is because tj is holding a lock on shared mode and after holding a lock on shared mode another transition tk is waiting uh, waiting for this particular on data item q and it is request for the exclusive lock okay see here now the lock this is shared mode lock this is also shared mode lock both are compatible but ti is not granted it is because before ti another transition tk is there which is waiting for this particular data item q so it is not allowed so in this way if we follow these two rules then there will be no starvation okay so this was for today. Thank you.